Miguel Beza versus Takashi Sato takes place this weekend on the main card of UFC Fight Night Vegas 15, Blades versus Lewis, and I can't wait for this welterweight matchup. You've got undefeated 9-0 contender series alum Miguel Beza. You know how high Dana White is with his contender series, guys. I wouldn't even be surprised if he beats Takashi Sato. Miguel Beza might be next in line for a title shot against Kamaru Usman because Dana White seems hell-bent on making sure that one of the contender series guys ends up getting a belt. It didn't work out for Alex Perez last weekend, but still into this one. Miguel Beza undefeated versus Takashi Sato, a very credentialed man with a great record himself. 16-3 and three coming into this bout. He's got three losses on his record. I know it's not quite as good as an undefeated Miguel Beza, but still, he's a very, very dangerous man with good wins on his record. Coming off a big win against Jason Witt, who just bounced back against Cole Williams and got himself a dominant performance just a couple of weekends ago. Takashi Sato is a dangerous, dangerous man. Earned himself a first round KO against Jason Witt. I know he lost to Bilal Mohamed, but the entire division might go on to lose to Bilal Mohamed, okay? I know that Bilal Mohamed's had some setbacks, but Bilal Mohamed is a dangerous, dangerous man in the welterweight division and now ranked for a reason, and if he beats Diego Lima coming up soon on that end of the year card that's amazing, by the way, then he's going to be looking at big names like Neil Magny, so I don't think we can take away from... Takashi Sato for losing to a guy like Bilal Mohamed, and by the way, putting up a bit of a fight while it lasted, I know he did get beaten quite badly, he got taken down, smothered on the ground, some ground game things got exposed, I guess you could say at the time, but you know... Bilal Mohamed's no slouch in the grappling, so I wouldn't even really say he got exposed. He landed some good shots in that fight, and in the third round, he just didn't really have it in him to fight off the submission attempts as much anymore, and that's what happened with Bilal Mohamed getting the submission in the third round. Hung in there, though, in the first two rounds, and even got a takedown of his own in that fight against Bilal Mohamed, who's no slouch in the grappling department, so I like Takashi Sato. I like Miguel Beza coming off a big win against Matt Brown. He got the KO in the second round. We're going to talk more about this win, okay? Then he came off a win before that against Hector Aldana, who was 4-2 at the time with a leg kick to punch his TKO finish. Very impressive to see a guy finish someone with leg kicks because that's something that they can do at any time in any fight. So as soon as you have the power to finish someone with a calf kick, I wouldn't be surprised if you do nothing but throw calf kicks for the rest of your career. Honestly, it's a dangerous, dangerous technique. And Miguel Beza is a very good fighter. Actually a Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt, but recently has been looking really good on the feet and feeling himself on the feet recently recently as well is he even in the contender series he was doing good in that fight knocked the guy down twice but then the rounds started to go on. The second round started to come around and Victor Reyna was landing a lot of good shots in the second round. In the third round, it looked like Victor Reyna was going to go on and finish Miguel Beza, but he rallied late to save himself. Ended up with a triangle submission nearly at the end of the fight. But still, the fight really ended with Victor Reyna getting the better of Miguel Beza. So I actually am going to pick Takashi Sato in this fight against Miguel Beza as a juicy underdog because I don't think he should be this much of an underdog. I I am a sucker for an undefeated record, don't get me wrong, but when I look into that undefeated record and I start seeing some red flags, I don't like him, and I'm going to point them out. He took on the first guy 0-2, 0-0, 3-2, 2-2, no one really good yet out of his first four wins. Not the best, but they've got experience. Some of them have got fights, so I don't blame him. The first four fights for any fighter are not usually against the best competition, but still... Not the best opponents. Moves up and takes on a guy who's 5-2 and two and takes him to a close split decision. The guy is now 5-4 and, uh, five and four from originally being 5-2 and two when he took on um, Miguel Beza. And now he's retired. I don't like that sign, in my opinion, that when he first jumped up to decent level competition, he went to a split decision. But then he came back and fought a guy, Matthew Colquhoun, who was also 5-2, and two, KO'd him in the first round. Then went on the contender series. Another jump up in competition. It was close. If he didn't get that knee knockdown in the second round, I don't know if he would have won that fight, in all honesty, because the third round went to Victor Reyna, and the second round, Victor Reyna was outlanding him on the feet, but Miguel Beza eventually got a knee knockdown at the very end of the round that secured him that round back, plus he knocked down Victor Reyna in the first round as well, which got him that round, but he dominated the first round pretty easily. He looked very good. In the first round, Miguel Beza is a very dangerous man. But as the fight goes on, 
Takashi Sato makes his reads. He can get into some scraps. And I think he's going to land a 1-2 combination. Com I think he's going to put him out with a 1-2 straight down the pipe in the second round. It's going to be a real problem for Miguel Beza, in my opinion. Because Takashi Sato is so experienced. Fought good guys throughout his career. Again, at the start of his career, not too many great competition opponents. 4-2, 4-9, 1-0, 1-0. Kind of the same situation with Miguel Beza. But then he takes his jumps up. He lost a fight against a guy who was 13-10, and 10, by the way. An absolute can, and he got KO'd in the first round. Little bit overlooking, maybe, as an 8-0 guy taking on a 13-10 and 10 man. Perhaps. But he lost that fight. Then he bounces back, however, and beats a guy 14-7, and 19-7, and 18-3 and three in uh, Akiro Muriyama, a good fighter. 18-3 and three guy. Takashi Sato goes out there and gets it done in the first round, 52 seconds in. Very, very dangerous man. He gets choked out. He rebuilds himself. And this is kind of what I like about Takashi Sato. He's addressed, in my opinion, a lot of his holes before he got to the UFC. And in that Bilal Muhammad fight, I know he got uh, finished again by rear naked choke. But Bilal Muhammad's a dangerous guy. I don't take that away from him. I don't like that Miguel Beza almost got finished in the first round against Matt Brown. I really don't like that because Bilal Muhammad is a streaking contender that could go on to get the top five, in all honesty. Like, Bilal Muhammad's a dangerous guy. Matt Brown's on his way out, man. And he nearly finished you in that first round. And I'll say this as well and go one further. If Miguel Beza didn't get saved by the cage in the first round, it could be all over. Because he flung backwards and was wobbling all over the place. And the cage kept him upright and on his feet. And if he went down on his back and Matt Brown was on top of him, as rocked as he was... I reckon Matt Brown probably would have got the finish there. Landed really good shots throughout the fight. Started to go for things in the second round against Miguel Beza, which is where he ultimately paid because he got rocked at the end of the first round against Miguel. Kind of wasn't coherent going into the second round, so he got finished early. But still, good performance by Miguel Beza. I'm appreciating that he is a good fighter. He's very technical. He does things well. But if Matt Brown's tagging you up with a 1-1-2... I think Takashi Sato in the prime of his career, not taking too much damage his career, learned against good competition opponents, beaten good competition opponents, is going to be able to go out there and get it done with a straight 1-2 down the pipe. He'll set it up with a jab in the first round and nothing else, in my opinion, because that's what he did against Ben Saunders. A lot of people are going to look at the stats of the Ben Saunders fight and say, look, Ben Saunders outlanded him in the first round really badly. He won the first round against him. Takashi Sato was making reads in that first round. I don't think that was a first round to Ben Saunders where Saunders was just way better than him. If you watch that fight again, Takashi Sato's acknowledging stuff. He never really puts on a face whenever he gets hit by shots. He's nodding as he goes round. He's testing out his combinations. He's throwing a lot of feints. He's not really committing to anything in the first round until the end of the first round where he really starts putting together his two behind his jab. And that's his best move ever. In his entire career, he's landed that 1-2 down the pipe. It's a thing of beauty. He landed it against Ben Saunders in the second round. He landed it against Jason Witt in the first round as well. Couple jabs, all he needed. I've made the read. I'm going to put the two behind it. Catches Jason Witt straight on the chin. I like Takashi Sato, and I feel like he can find that opening in Miguel Beza if a guy like Matt Brown can. I know Matt Brown is a veteran. On his way out, man. He bounced back against Diego Sanchez. You know what I mean? I know at the time it looked like a really cool KO. But Diego Sanchez ain't bounce back to tell me you're ready to take on top contenders. I haven't picked Matt Brown in that fight because I thought Miguel Beza had a tough time on the contender series. His guy who he beat in his UFC debut was such a can feed and I don't like the babying that these contender series guys are getting because he took on Hector Aldana in his UFC debut and it wasn't a short notice replacement either by the way. He had a fight booked in June. He got a replacement of Victor Reyna on the contender series. Going into the Hector Aldana fight, Aldana was the fight booked for him. 4-2 and two, Hector Aldana at the time. Came into the UFC, 4-0, and oh, lost on the Ultimate Fighter Brazil, I believe it was. Came into the UFC, lost, lost again. Then got a fight with Miguel Beza, basically spoon-fed Miguel Beza a decent win against a guy coming off two losses in a row that showed that he can't hang in the UFC whatsoever. And then somehow... Um, Loses in the first, in the second round to uh, leg kicks. It was a very good performance by Miguel Beza. I don't know why I just said the word somehow. Don't know why that came out of my mouth. But I'm definitely going to be picking Takashi Sato in this fight. Beat great opponents. He beat Matt Vale. 
who's a guy from Australia, who's a very dangerous talent. He beat Matt Vale when he was 10-1, and 1, by the way, as well. A very dangerous guy coming up. Beat him very convincingly. He, uh, Matt Vale was the, what, XFC champion? XFC champion? Yes, he was. The XFC champion coming into Pank Race. Takashi Sato says, no thank you. Even gets rocked in that fight. Comes back against a young, hungry, talented 10-1 and 1 guy and beats him in the second round by TKO. I'm so looking forward to Sato getting out there. I think he's going to take the win against Miguel Beza with a 1-2 down the pipe in the second round. The first round might go to Beza, but then again, in the first fight with uh, Ben Saunders that he had in the UFC where he ended up coming back in the second round, he took a lot of leg kicks and he seemed okay with it. So I don't think he's going to be getting leg kicked to death by Miguel Beza in that first round. He seems okay to allow leg kicks to land so long as he gets a little bit more information out of you because that fight with Ben Saunders, he was very patient, setting up his jab the entire time he was looking to set up the one two. He fainted it a couple of times. At the end of the first round, he really went for it, but Ben Saunders ducked underneath it so he made that read, lowered it in the second round. It was just, I can sense the IQ in Takashi Sato's head. And with Miguel Beza, he seems like a really good athlete, a really good Brazilian jiu-jitsu guy as well, black belt in Brazilian jiu-jitsu, that's recently fallen in love a little bit with his stand-up. And I don't think he quite has the stand-up experience against top-level competition that Takashi Sato has. And I think he's going to get exposed in the second round. I'm picking against the undefeated guy. Takashi Sato is my underdog pick. They opened as like, Sato was like a two to one underdog, which was ridiculous. Uh, or uh, sorry, Miguel Beza was a two to one favorite. That line is now closing as this week goes on. So I feel like the betters are kind of on my side here because they see that those odds are ridiculous as well. I could see that line closing even more because Takashi Sato should not have been that much of an underdog. And I'm actually going to pick him to win against Miguel Beza on the main card. And if he does win, big things to happen in the welterweight division. I'd like to see him take on the Nico Prices of this world, the other welterweights of this world that I can't quite remember the name of that are all coming off wins right now. There's a bunch of them outside the rankings waiting for a guy like Takashi Sato to jump on in. And if Miguel Beza wins, listen, you've got a 10-0 guy and I'll give him all the respect in the world because Takashi Sato's a beast. I don't see Sato getting KO'd. Even though he was KO'd earlier in his career, he got rocked badly against Vale, came back in that fight, showed a great chin, dropped Matt Vale in the first round as well and then got dropped in the second round, came back in the second round to get the finish. It was a good fight to watch. I feel like I'm going to go with Sato in the second round though. Yeah, I really like Miguel Beza though, but I will say this, that Takashi Sato is a very dangerous man, had a fight booked for August, so did Miguel Beza, had a fight booked for September, both of these guys have known about this fight for a while, so they're going to show up in peak condition, uh, Takashi Sato had an easier last fight than Miguel Beza, I guess I could weigh into the situation as well, I am picking an underdog here, so I'm going to claw on to any kind of information that's going to give me a bit of a better argument as well, because Matt Brown really badly did rock Miguel Beza in the first round of their fight, and I know that was all the way back in May or June, no, it was in May. It was all the way back in May. I do understand that. But he still got rocked really badly in the first round of that fight. And Sato, in June, had no trouble whatsoever and got out of there in 48 seconds with no damage at all on his body. Turning around, he's got the quicker turnaround. He's in his prime. He's got more experience. He's coming off less damaging win, uh, a less damaging win. He's going to go out in there against Miguel Beza and smoke him in the second round. Thank you for watching the video. Click that button up there. Like and subscribe. This is, a do this is the dog of the card, in my opinion. I don't see Derek Lewis beating Curtis Blades, but I can see Sato getting the upset against Beza. I think this should be 50-50. They've made Sato too juicy of an underdog for me to pass up. Goodbye. See you later. Toodle pip.